Today's jobs report showing that U.S. hiring slowed to its slowest pace since 2020. As you mentioned, the Labor Department coming out saying that that was partly due to some recent labor strikes as well as the two hurricanes that hit the southeast last month. But they did say it will take a while to quantify those impacts. Now, you had the chance to catch up with the White House's Jared Bernstein earlier today on the early edition of Balance of Power to get the administration's take on these job numbers. The bureau itself, which they don't often do, the bureau itself uh, said that the hurricanes, uh, you know, very likely played a role here. The underlying strength of the American economy, the American labor force, uh, is ongoing. We have a full spate of reports from this week that show that to be the case. And if you look at the unemployment rate, which is far less affected by strikes and hurricanes, that held at 4.1 percent. The economy is the top issue for voters in battleground states. Unemployment is below pre-pandemic levels in six out of seven of those places, according to a Bloomberg analysis of the most recent government data available. Nevada does have the highest unemployment among the seven battlegrounds. That number was above the national average before the pandemic started. A different economic indicator out this week shows Nevada as well as Michigan, another battleground we're closely watching, with economy shrinking in the third quarter. They're two of the 14 states that saw a contraction in GDP for the three months through September. That's from a gauge by the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia, which serves as a proxy for a state's gross domestic product. Nationwide, GDP grew at 2.8 percent in the third quarter, slightly below estimates. Now, this is the data, but when it comes to how Americans are feeling about the economy, consumer confidence in increased this month by the most since March of 2021. That's according to the conference board out this week, which uh, shows apparent optimism by Americans about the broader economy as well as the labor market. But Joe, it is important to point out that both this gauge as well as uh, the University of Michigan's consumer sen sentiment gauge out last week shows that these numbers are still well below pre-pandemic levels. This is great information, Tyler. I really appreciate it, especially when you put it against our polling in the Bloomberg News Swing State Survey that has, it's been very sticky repeatedly every month for a year shown the economy as the number one issue for voters. Right, exactly. And it has also repeatedly shown former President Donald Trump leading Vice President Kamala Harris on this issue. The most recent Bloomberg News Morning Console polling showing him ahead when it comes to voter confidence on the economy by about five percentage points. But that varies when we look at the different battleground states. Pennsylvania, for example, that gap is three uh, percent. So we'll have to see how it goes heading into the polls.